Hi, um, my name is Ewa Dina. So, and that's Ewa Dina, not Ewa Dina, it gets confused. Um, and I'm Assistant Director on Anne Breathe, and today I'll also be helping to lead the Q&A. Um, thank you so much for watching the show. I'd like to invite up onto the stage the writer of Anne Breathe, award-winning poet, Yomi Shode. Hello. What's going on? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm all right. How's everyone? Yeah. Are we all right? Everyone good? Yeah? yeah? yeah. Interwebs, how are you doing? You cool? <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Wicked. Hey, um, the great thing, it's so good to see you too. We see each other so often, oh. you know, through this process. It's, it's great though, I love it. He's such a positive energy to have around. Um, Yomi likes to do these things at his poetry nights, from what I've seen so far, where he reads out everyone's bios. So I've decided Aww. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, it's happening. I've decided I'm gonna do that today. It's a clipped one, it's a clipped three short. Okay. But I'm gonna read out his bio. So, at the age of nine, Yomi found himself as the unintentional storyteller, writing stories about, writing stories without actually knowing the potential of the pen. Once long listed as one of MTV's brand new artists, writer slash poet Yomi Shode, who has been performing for the last 10 years, balances the fine line between both Nigerian and British cultures, which can be at times humorous, loving, self-reflective, and uncomfortable. In 2017, his show premiered at the Roundhouse and has toured nationally. It also sold out in over 24 hours. In 2019, Yomi was one of three writers awarded the Gerald Compton Poetry Fellowship. I mean, amazing. And that's, that's not even everything. It's clipped. <laughs> really brilliant. Really brilliant. Um, so now you all know a bit about Yomi's work so far. I'd love to ask, um, how did you begin? You know, what's been your journey so far? up until this point, especially starting writing poetry and now having a play, you know, main stage on a theatre, I'd love to find out what that journey's been like for you. Um, can I just acknowledge that my mum's here, <laughs> real quick. Um, And I think, it, interestingly enough, it kind of kicked off from there because the times that, like, any elder would annoy the life out of me. You know them ones there, you just can't yeah, talk you back. Just you just have to just swallow, swallow, condense. <laughs> so there's no room to kind of talk to the elders in a sense if they annoyed you, like. Mm. And I just, I, just remind, I just remember just writing the thoughts mm. down, like, this is what I love to say, what, shell an uncle like this, yeah. what? <laughs> of course, but... Um, I will just, um, I will write it down. That kind of grew with me over time. Mm. Um, and I joke that my first ever story that I wrote was about a, a macaroni penguin, because I, I liked, I, I had a thing for penguins mm. when I was younger. I don't know if anyone's seen macaroni penguins, they've got like, this fiery thing in the front of their head, they look super cool. Um, but I wrote a story about them when I got my first merit. Mm. And the teacher was just like, oh, you can really write stories. And that kind of stuck with me. And um, and I just carried on writing here and there in terms of entries. And it's just gone into different ways. But to be fair, I have a love for music. Mm -hmm. So in, I learned to produce music. I learned to DJ, learned to MC. You know, So Solid was huge for me back in the day. Mm -hmm. But we don't know So Solid in here, do you know what I mean? And it's like those things, <laughs> those things were really huge for me. So I kind of, I wanted to learn about literature, but also I wanted to understand these soundscapes and what they meant. Mm -hmm. And when it came to writing, that part I paid particular attention to as well. Mm -hmm. And the poetry came in when I performed with a live band. I didn't feel like people were hearing what I was saying. So I'm like, I don't want to perform to music no more. So I, my voice was the instrument. And I started to write to that. And I got my own cadence off the back of that. And it kind of made sense over time. And then it lent itself in different stages. Um, and yeah, and, and I guess that was it. I think for me, it's always been, it's always been playful. Um, it's always a curiosity in regards to how far can literature just kind of, how far can I push, mm. you know, because I'm just being curious and having fun at the same time. I don't like the idea of being stuck in one medium. Mm. 
but I, I enjoy the, the, the space that I'm in. It doesn't mean I'm gonna now go from here to here and, and not respect it. I respect every single genre, you know, even when it came to writing Colt, my first solo show that I wrote and performed in, I didn't write any poetry or read any poems for like the best part of a year because I just really wanted to be immersed in theater and pay respect to the people that this is their field, you know? Um, and the same with respect to when it came to Anne Breathe. But Anne Breathe was different because it was a sequence of poems. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess I hope that kind of answers that yeah. a bit. No, definitely. Let me know, you know, I kind of waffle. No, 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 we love it, we love it. Let me know, <laughs> let me know, because I tend to kind of go off. I just, let me stick to point, you know? Mm. No, that's great. I'd love to find out then, kind of in that line of thinking, yeah. what is your actual process when approaching writing something, writing a, a poem? Um, and how does that differentiate from the process of Anne Breathe? I think it was the same process. It was, with, with Anne Breathe, it was different. Anne Breathe, we lost Big Mummy on December 4th, my birthday. Mm -hmm. You know, Mum will attest to that. She called me. Yeah. <sighs> she called me, right? Yeah. And I think in the lead up to that, what I was doing was Anything that was quite iconic in memory, I would just jot it, I would just put it in my notes on my phone. So, bus stop, that, that took me to a memory. The DLR, that took me to a memory. Mm -hmm. And when I looked back on it, it was like this, this, I was just scrolling through all these different prompts. Mm -hmm. And all of that was a memory. And I spoke to no one after she died. Everyone was asking me if I'm all right, I didn't know what to say, even in Amsterdam with my boys, I couldn't really talk on it because my concern was my cousin. Yeah. I didn't even really know how to talk to him, but I trusted in my brothers to look after him. And in December 27th, from it to my writing space, I got there right after nine something in the morning. I left that spot about 11 something at night and I wrote the entire sequence. Everything that everyone kind of, everything that everyone saw today, I wrote it in a day, mm. barring two poems. I, I, and that was a funeral and that was the reception wow. because it hadn't happened yet. Yeah. So everything else that you all heard, you all saw, I wrote all of that in one day. Because it, it even though I was logging everything, mm. I just needed time. Mm. Um, and that time was that day that mm. I just needed everything to just come out as raw mm. as, it, as, it, as it could. And then, you know, I kind of like zapped out of it. When, it. when the night came, I'm like, it's close to midnight, I'm leaving this place. And I'm just like, I've just got all of these pages. Mm. And I just left it. I left it there for about three months. And I didn't want to return to it until I wrote the, the final two poems that I felt completed this sequence, right? Mm. And I just left it there and it stayed there. Mm. I only showed that day, my cousin, I showed it to him on May 8th, 2021. Mm. I sent it to him earlier this year and he said, I don't want to read it. I want to read it, but I want you to be here to read it with me. Yeah. And he refused to read it. And on May 8th, 2021 was Big Mummy's birthday. We went to go lay flowers in a cemetery. And um, we, got, we got to mum's later that, that, that day and I read everything to him. Mm. And, um, you know, there were things that, there were things that we didn't know we was going through, do you yeah. see what I mean? Like he, yeah. so for example, I don't know if everyone remembers when the, the consultant broke the news that it's going to be a week from now, or whatever, and everything. So what I didn't know was that he recorded all of that conversation. Mm. So he sent me the audio, and I'm hearing it, and then here's me, I wrote the actual situation. Yeah. So he sends me this, and I send him that. And we both just had a moment, like we're both going through these, this process mm. in different ways. Yes, yeah. My way is I write, right? This is my outlet I write and I felt very guilty in writing about it. I was scared to even tell mum about it because I didn't know how she was going to take it. It's a cultural thing. You don't talk them things. You know what yeah. I mean? So I didn't know how she was going to take it, how the family was going to take it. But this was my advice. This is, this is, this is the best way I know how. Mm. And for him, I was always wondering what his process was. Mm -hmm. So for him to talk to me about it, for us to sit down, go through each scene, each poem, sorry, and, and we just had a moment afterwards. Like, I didn't know you was going through that. Mm. And he's like, Ra, you remember that? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, like KFC when you was younger, well, when you were fresh here, I remember that. None of that left me. Mm. And we joked, we laughed. 
And I was scared before I went in. And afterwards, we were like, we should have done this before yeah. because we've never spoken about this yeah. before. We've never explored grief in a way because we always thought that it was going to hurt each other. Mm. And not knowing that, he's like, yo, I need a drink. I'm like, yeah, I need a drink too. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Not knowing. Yeah. Not knowing it's something that will build us and make us stronger, do you know what I mean? Yeah, completely. But, um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. That's I can't cool. even, you know, begin to imagine what it is to have to, like, watch this uh. um, on stage and in some ways relive it and reflect upon it. Yeah. Um, so thank you. And, you know, I'm holding space for you and I definitely feel like yes. everybody in this room, everybody that's watching is, is holding that space too. Um, hmm. It's... And Breathe really feels like an anchor. It feels like a space for people to come and almost breathe and grieve in their own ways. And I think the honesty of the work is so intrinsic in that. Um, Thank you. And I know that you know, no, no, no worries at all. Um, and what's really lovely is that you set up a digital space that anybody that has reflections or responses to, to the play can go on, can read, can write their own reflections. Um, and it's a really beautiful space. Please feel free. Yeah, go. Like everybody it's here now. to. It's online. Yeah, have a look. I'd love to find out why you felt like that was a necessary thing to do um, and how you found having that space for your own process. Honestly, I, I never prepped for how heavy. Post every show, mm. amazing folks will send me the loveliest messages, the most beautiful messages of, of how they lost a family member, a friend, mm. how they're relating to it. And it's sat in me. Mm. It's sat in me in such a way. I'm waking up at 3.30 in the morning. This morning I woke up at, I woke up at 4, 4.45 I woke up this morning. I couldn't sleep no more. Mm. Physically, it's hurting me. Mm. I can't. And I'm not even saying that in a, in a negative way, yeah. in like a bad way, but I'm just like, all of this is coming to me now and I never yeah. prepared for myself for just the weight of the response mm. of how people are taking to it and their amazing spaces. Like, I'm so thankful for everybody this message. I mean, I'm to this day going forward, I'm still very thankful, but then I realized that I need to, I need to practice self-care mm. also. Mm. And I need to find a way to practice self-care. And so I reached out to, to the staff and, and saying, OK, I'm getting all these messages. And as well as getting all these messages, I would love to create a space, like a digital space, mm. that people can access and um, also share their thoughts on there as well. So it's not only through this one channel. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to necessarily talk to me. It's anonymized, so you can go on there and share as much thoughts as possible. Mm. And it's beautiful. Like, I, I, I went up there, I went on there earlier today and I'm reading some of these stories, reading some of the comments, some people putting poems in there, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so I really implore you, like if you have any thoughts or what have you, really go on the site and share, share some thoughts on there. Mm. Um, and I guess that was it. I never, I didn't, I didn't consider just afterwards in terms yeah. of just how the impact of, of the work. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't ever take that back either, which is yeah. what I mean. But I also needed to, in my own learning, to know, okay, how do I now deal with, with this weight that mm. comes in as well? Mm. Really great. Thank you so much, Yomi. Oh, really. um, I also, uh, if anybody doesn't know, and Breathe, or the section of poetry that and Breathe is, is also part of Mannerism, which is Yomi's book. Mm. Anthology that's coming out next year. It's available for pre-order, so hey, pre-order the text. Yeah, pre-order, pre-order. Listen, it's for, it's for. Um, but, <laughs> but I just, I just thought I'd ask you a bit about mannerism and yeah. just what that is and what it's about. And yeah, I was mannerism. It's my first. De it's my debut collection. It's coming out next year, spring. I'm mm. excited, and um, I was just really interested in. I was really interested in code switching on another level. I was just like, why is it that wherever I, wherever I step into, I'm constantly switching mm. physicality? Do you know what I mean? I'm with my man them. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Do you know what mm. I mean? I see auntie, I say auntie, ah, uh, she what? You know, <laughs> I break into everything. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, yeah. 
But I'm talking to her, like, yeah, cool, all right, nice. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm proper, I go to work. Mm. I'm finding myself sitting upright and whether it is if a manager comes in or something like that, and I'm like, wow, mm. what is, my body's not resting. Yeah. It's consistently doing this. Yeah. But I'm like, my, my, my white brethren or whatever it is, do you go through similar things? Like, what's the situation? And I thought about a situation like one time, I went into a, into a, went into a club and immediately I'm looking at all the exits. Yeah because my mannerisms over time is so like, rah, something pop off. You just need to know it, we're going stage, we're going left yeah. or we're going right. Yeah, yeah. One of them things is going on, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I've been in too many situations mm. where my mannerisms are intrinsic in me, mm. right? In the manner that I grew up in, hence why it's mannerism, yeah. right? So I know exactly what my, I know my situation before there's a situation, do you mm. know what I mean? Whereas my brother now, he just wants to get drunk. Mm. I'm like, rah. <laughs> but life is pretty all right yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah. I have to, yeah, it's true. every night, every club I'm walking into, I'm thinking I'm Terminator. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. proper like. <laughs> Anchored. And just like, proper eyeing up everything. <laughs> infrared in every, do you know what I'm like? Why am I going through that? Yeah. So the book is really exploring all of that. It's looking at juxtapositions of European art. Mm. It's looking into situations that that is happening at present do you know what i mean mm. right now everyone's screaming sterling sterling do you know what i mean but but there was a gun tattoo and a leg yeah. at one point in life and i'm just like what 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 you forgot amnesia lost you real yeah, quick yeah. you know all of them things are really interesting to me mm. and then in came this third section which is which is and breathe mm. and it's looking deeper in regards to the vulnerability of and the vulnerability of black men, mm. essentially, mm. right? Um, I mentioned this before in, in, in previous Q and A's, like that situation on the bus was real. Yeah. I they called me. Mm. He said, "Well, I think she's, 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 I think this is it." I called mum. Mm. You know? Yeah. I called my lady. I'm like, what am I doing? Mm. I'm on that bus. I'm in York Way. Yeah. Mm. Going to King's Cross. I get off the phone, I start crying, crying. No one asking if I'm all right. Mm. Not a soul's asking if I'm all right. Mm. And again, I've joked about this before. I'm like, I've seen it in the movies, I've seen it in the, in the, in the soap operas. Mm. Are you all right, love? <laughs> <laughs> Am I lying? No, it's true. You all right, love? Mm. I even said it in the last q and I said, listen, dogs, yeah? Dogs are wailing, going mad on a bus or on a train or yeah, whatever okay. it is. Someone is still like, is he all right? Yeah. <laughs> people paid more attention to pet, people paid more attention yeah. to animals. And that's when it gets serious. People paid more yeah. attention to animals mm. than they did me mm. that morning. All the while, people are asking, there's so much black on black crime. All black boys killing themselves, they're doing all this stuff. Mm. Why didn't they talk more? They don't open up a bit more. I gave that window to open. Yeah. Yeah? Mm. Uh, yeah? Yeah. I gave that window. No one asked if I was okay. And what happened? I shut up again. I'm like, well, silly me. What am I doing? Mm. Why did I even try to question that no one will come to my aid? Mm. So I closed. Wipe, wipe the snot. Wipe the tears. I left. Mm. Cussing, and I'm cussing myself like, "Raw, how did you open your? How you do yeah. that for?" Yeah. So I left, mm. and 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 I guess it's it's that all of this is being asked for, but at the mm. same time, when you get it, you actually don't know what to do with it. Yeah. And and for me, it was really interesting to explore this some more in the book, mm. and to ask these questions. I'm not coming in with no solutions, but I will ask questions. I will pose situations. Mm. And um, I guess it was just that, and that's why I breathe was important because it's not, it's looking into me going in with my cousin, like, well, how dare you not tell me that big mummy had cancer? Mm. How dare you? I'm coming in there, big chest, big. Mm. And then I had to check myself, like, right, he's not, he's not talking to you to because you. you haven't been there for him mm. when you've thought you've been there for him. Mm. So I had to check myself, my, my own projection, my own guilt. Everything had to get examined in this whole piece. Mm. And, man, I guess there's that. I, th I, th I think it's, there's, there's that kind of importance in regards to, in regards to the book mm. and more, mm. you know? Mm. But, yeah. This piece definitely, I feel, gives permission mm. 
to be vulnerable in a, in a space that sometimes isn't necessarily connected to that, connected to allowing black male vulnerability. Mm. And I think that's really, you know, in the backbone of what this piece is about. I've had my boys call me. Yeah. Vex at me. How dare you? How dare you? Are you mad? Are you attacked, brother? I've always wrong with you. I'm like, yeah. what's, what's, what did I do? What happened? <laughs> you, didn't prepare, you didn't prepare me to get into an emotion that I wasn't yeah. ready to go into. Yeah. They're angry at me. And I'm, and, and, and I'm at a position that I don't know what to do or how to react to them. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Other than just like, I'm here if you want to talk to me. You know, I feel like it's open channels of conversations that we haven't necessarily been in before. Mm. And if this piece is doing that, great, mm. you know? Um, mm. Yeah. Right. In that vein, I'd love to know, obviously you've gone through a process and you know, grief is, is never ending. Mm. So you're still within it. But if you could go back and kind of give advice to yourself at that time, knowing everything that you know now, having gone through this big journey, what is it that you'd say to yourself in relation to grief and how to grieve and having permission to grieve? I don't know if I would change. Anything. Like, I just, I, I sat next. I'm rubbing her back for the entire mm. show, right? Mm. <laughs> And, you know, I'm rubbing her back for the entire show. As soon as she heard her, why are you crying for? She's like, that's straight. That's mad energy. That's like, the elbow was so sharp. Do you know the joke? The elbow was so sharp. Two twos, now drooling for the tissue in it. And she's like this. So like, like wiping her own tears. But it gave room for that. I don't, we have not, we don't, we haven't spoken about it as a family but it offered room for that. It offered room for me to enter something, not thinking I'm gonna be here to save the day. Yeah. I think I'm going in there as the eldest on some superhero complex, like, okay, cool. Everything is happening. Let me now try to fix this. Mm. And like that line, like a hatching bird in my palm. I did not call. I did not call because mm. I'm like, here I am. Okay, cool. You got the role, cool. Mom just slipped on a leaf, yeah. true stories. She slipped on that leaf. Yeah. I'm not there to help her, mm. you know? Two sat in the morning. She's getting an Uber to go there. I'm not there. To, I'm like, let me try to get an Uber to go there. She's saying, don't go. I'm going to go there. Mm. Everything is happening where I felt I had control. And I didn't have control. Even up until the day that, she, that big mommy passed, I wasn't there. I saw the phone, the message... I wasn't there. So at some point, I just had to just let go of just trying to fix things, yeah. right? I had to let go of just always trying to be on call or whatever it is, and I just had to understand that certain things just have to happen, and I have to enter this differently when it comes to support, mm. right? And I also questioned whether the whole trying to fix it every time was just based off of conditioning anyway. Yeah, exactly. Do you know, like, there's a cultural thing in terms of always wanting to try to, like, fix it or not let everything get too wild. Yeah. And I'm like, no, we're actually going to let it get wild. Mm. Let it get wild in order for us to know how to make sense to bring it back together yes, again. Yes, yes. And I think we've done that beautifully in terms of, like, it got absolutely chaotic. And as a family, we, we, we brought it back in. Mm. One of my favourite lines of the play um, is when... Junior is talking about Uncle D towards the end, and he says, I want to tell him to do what feels is right. I think that's so resonant yeah. of everything that you've just been saying, because I agree, I think it's a cultural thing. I think it's connected to kind of trauma that we all inhabit as mm. people who are black, as people who are brown, as we you know, grow, it's generational, it's colonialism, it's everything. Mm. It makes you feel like you have to have a stronghold on everything and you have to be the one that is upright. Mm. Um, and that's so kind of far from what we actually need. Mm. I think that's very, you know, connected in the play. Um, I, love to, I know there's, there's probably a lot of up-and-coming creatives, poets, writers that are watching this at the moment. Um, so I'd love to ask if you could give them any advice for anyone watching that wants to, you know, 
make a career from making work, from writing? What would you say to them? I'm, I'm still a big fan of play. I'm still a big fan yeah. of like, yeah, you're writing this. Uh, you know, unless if I'm definitely trying to work on a poetic form, mm. that's you know, my chosen form for this. And when people read the book, you see that it's all prose, you know, yeah. and that was my, that's, that's the form that I chose to write in because I wanted to give enough room to write that out. Mm. Um, but I, I would still say don't be bound on trying to get the structure right straight away. You mm. first just have to write it all out in the first instance. You have to just toy with things in the first instance mm. to get from a point of going into a hospice to talking about the DLR, whether the DLR has got a driver or not. Mm. There has to be room for play, it, to which I felt a bit, like, guilty about. I'm like, I'm joking, I'm laughing a bit here when I'm writing this, mm. but then I have to understand that grief has many, yes. takes place in many forms, yeah. even down to food. Mm. All of that was true. I'm like, rah, this camera, cameralized, this, on, this, this <laughs> caramelized onion tastes all right. Thank you, know it's what I mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm like, this, this sweet potato, I'm, I'm getting cast for putting a sweet potato in like a panini business, but I'm like, yo, carbs what? On carbs. Carbs on cars, but yo, banging. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not hating this food right now. Just what I mean. It's true, it's true. It's but true. all of that is still part of grief when mm. there's no voice, mm. right? All of that is still try me still processing and not me feeling like super guilty about it. I have to just mm. write it, write it out. Yeah. Um, do you remember in rehearsal? Mm -hmm when the doors just flung open. Yes, all the time. It's super weird all stuff. All the time. I, well, I won't say it's weird, but I'm just like, at certain points in rehearsal, when, when, we're, oh, go when, when, when we're going through the script, mm. the door just swung open. And then me, Moran, everyone's just looking at each other like, hey, whoa! <laughs> What's what going is, on? <laughs> what have we said? What have we done? <laughs> we're, like, we're thinking, oh, did we do something to upset Big Mummy real quick? What mm. happened? What, what went on there? Mm. It happened on more than one occasion, right? Yeah. And I guess it's just those things there that we just kind of fell into the energy that, mm. you know, it's just more than just a piece. Mm. And, and while I'm here, please, can we send some love to, to Miranda, David, Femi, yes. Paulie, Tony, Ewa, do you know what I mean? Ravi, please, can we just give them a round of applause? Woo! And yourself, and yourself. Yeah, it's the um, this. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be what it is without just the, just the eye and the knowledge and the care that everyone put into place. Ewa is so sick. For every single poem in the rehearsal room, um, she printed out references for every single poem. So it's almost like an exhibition, so to speak, in terms of trying to map out how we're trying to get to with the emotion. Mm -hmm. Listen, she even done like a... Um, what's this that you with done? a glossary. She's done a glossary <laughs> of each Nigerian term, yeah? <laughs> It's not even a joke. This in your NF4. She, 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 she got the picture of the in your NF4 and she Quite put it actually, in the glossary. Yeah, so <laughs> the work that that ever put in, the work that everyone put in, mm. is is incredible. The, mm. the how we got to make the music randomly yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. It was just all a joy. Mm. It's a lot of heart, and it's that so definitely heart. comes from the work. The work has heart, and therefore everybody that was involved in it really gave you know so much heart. And I wish. Miranda was here. Hi, Miranda. Um, Hi, Miranda. And she, she's just, she's, she's incredible, you know. She's really took the production and held it, and it was really beautiful to kind of be a part of it. So thank mm. you, Yomi. Oh, that's really um, good. Yeah, I really, really appreciate it. I'd love to find out one thing, because for anyone that doesn't know, the show is ending on Saturday, at least for now, anyway. But it's ending on Saturday, which is... <laughs> whew, I'm not ready. Um, I'm not ready. But I'd love to find out what your favourite moment of the show has been so far. Every, every, I've watched this show a lot of times, mm. and every, every um, different bits catch me. Yeah. Every every every, every single time. Mm. Um, tonight it was the the tonight it was the scene where Junior was like, I want the I want the pastors and the chaplain, mm. I want them to pray for Big Mummy again, but harder yeah, this time. time. Mm. There's such a desperation in that line mm. that sp sp spoke for everybody in that room because, mm. Mum, do you remember that? When Big Mummy raised a knee, 
she raised, the pastor spoke to her and she raised one knee, poof, poof, dropped. And we were just like, whoa. Mm. It's the only time she moved so much was within the prayer because she carried prayer, she yeah. carried religion with her. Yeah. That's why that line, you know, she put more faith in God than the NHS. And that way, we can take years to kind of decipher that in terms of what that, the connotations with that. But because she has such an underlying love for God, yeah. as soon as the chaplain came and anointed her with oil and began his prayer, she moved mm. so much. Mm. Wow. She moved so much. The pastor came in. He said, Mommy, do you hear me? And he said, Mommy, do you hear me? The knee went up. The knee dropped. That whole room went. I'll never forget that, that scene brought so much because for us to witness it as a family was, was it was serious. It was very, very, very serious. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it just showed the kind of belief she had. And, and, and so when that line came in to be like, I want them to do exactly what they just done, mm -hmm. but do it 10 no. times. Yeah. Harder, just to see what to, what's going to happen, mm. and I guess that's that's where that um, stemmed for. So tonight was that line, mm. yeah, yeah. And what about your favorite moment outside of the show? Just in terms of people coming, or the reactions, or the mural, anything listen, outside the it? The people, them, that like, eh? Hey, <laughs> listen, I'm hearing I'm hearing Kano P's and Q's out in the foyer. <laughs> I'm like, what? We came up and we transformed the space. Yeah. We transformed the space, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, and, and there was something about my boys has never act, has never, they kind of looked about, like, in, in theatre, they've never kind of accessed the theatre before. Mm. And they come in the theatre, and it's my work that brought them in the theatre. And they're like, yo, I might need to go see more plays, you know? Yeah. And for them to say that to me, <laughs> for them to say that to me, it's, mm. it speaks to the, to the importance yeah. of why our stories matter. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It mm. speaks to the importance of why there needs to be more of this happening because it transformed the space. Mm. And for that, um, I'm thankful to the community and to the, to, 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 to the peeps then for just, for coming out, mm. for, 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 for messaging, for, mm. you know, I'm seeing Thank amazing you. people in there tonight. I'm seeing people that I respect in their own field mm. come to me and be like, I'm supporting only you, I'm supporting everyone like within here. Mm. Um, it was great. It's great to kind of, it's great for people, walk, staff walking up in the reception room in the green room and they're smelling jollof. <laughs> and we're just in there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Afrobeats <laughs> is popping and we're just like, eat and we're just, and we, we yeah. really made it what we right. wanted it to be. Yeah. And didn't fall into any, any other pressure in terms of any lens, mm. but mm -hmm. we, we made it what we wanted to be. And I'm, and I'm very, very, we were thankful for that, and I will miss that. I will miss you. Yeah, I'll miss, I'll miss you too. I will miss everyone that's been part of this process. Yeah, you know. But yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I thank feel you. so enriched. I feel like I know you even better. Boy. Um, it's been really beautiful. Uh, I just want to say to everyone out there, thank you for watching. But also, Yomi is just, you know, the kindest, most genuine, loving, and just generous soul that I've met. You know in my life and hey, it's been really is, my friend that no, is no, big no. you know i have, I have several that's big have what are you several. doing listen, 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 why is kind of big I'm stuff i'm being serious i'm being serious accept the compliment don't try and distract from it listen i met a lot of wonderful people for me in my life it's not just you but um you are you are you are as a person and you are in your work and it's been such a pleasure such a pleasure meeting you and speaking mm. to you today and being a part of this process. So thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you to your family for being wonderful and mm. for being them and for coming and supporting and being a part of this story. Mm. Thank you to Ade for allowing mm. his story to be told as well. And, you know, most importantly, I just want to say thank you to Big Mommy, who is the bedrock of this story. Um, we see you. We rest with you and we just hope that you continue to stay in perfect peace. So thankful, so thankful. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.